Hello everyone and welcome to the Wolfel Farmers Market vendor only video series designed specifically to give you the tips and tools to expand your marketing efforts and increase your sales. My name is Julie and I'm the communications manager for WFM and each month I'm going to be walking you through one targeted topic and giving you actionable steps that you can start using right away to impact your business. So let's get started. Today we are going to be talking about taking quality photos of your products why it's worth it to improve your skills, how to do that effectively and efficiently, and where you're going to use your different shots. So why does having good photography matter? Well, if you are selling or promoting your products online, there's a good chance that the photo you take of your product will be the first impression that a customer will have of you. I know that you have a lot of loyal Saturday Market customers, and many of you have been deeply ingrained in this community for years. But with the growing shift to online shopping and the ever-present health concerns of gathering in public spaces, more and more consumers are choosing to shop online and therefore browsing your products from their computers and smartphones. If this is the first time that a customer is seeing your product, you want to be giving the best first impression possible. This leads right into number two, which is the quality of your photo is going to set the customer's expectation of the quality of your product. Like it or not, the way that your product is presented will directly impact the expectation of how much enjoyment the customer is going to get from eating, wearing, using your product. The nicer the photo, the more someone will want to engage with it. Which leads me right into reason three, and possibly the most obvious. Great imagery creates desirability, which translates into sales. Plain and simple, cultivating your photography skills is going to help you sell more products. Okay, so I've convinced you to at least keep watching this video to learn more about how to improve your photography skills effectively and efficiently. First off, you don't need to buy anything new. We're going to focus on using the camera that you already own, which is the one attached to your smartphone. You're already carrying it with you everywhere you go, so you're already prepped to take great photos of your products. Let's start with some general do's and don'ts of photography. Do use natural lighting when photographing your products. That means either going outside or moving close to a window, and it definitely means shooting in the daytime. Do wipe the lens of your camera before you start shooting. Yes, you can do this with the corner of your t-shirt. Do use portrait mode as much as possible to set the focal point of your shot. Do hold still or use a small tripod whenever possible to reduce blurry shots. Try not to rush your shots, hoping to fix them in editing. It's almost impossible to make a blurry shot look good later. Do take multiple shots of the same thing from various angles so you can compare images and choose the best one. Don't. Never use the zoom on your camera. It will decrease the quality of your shot, making it look fuzzy later. So instead, physically get closer to your subject. Never use the flash. It will flatten the image and create strange shadows. Stick with natural lighting and only shoot during the day. Don't over edit your photos. Using too many filters can alter the colors, giving a false or undesirable appearance to your products, so be careful with over-editing. We're going to talk later about how to minimally edit while keeping colors natural. So let's get set up to take some photos. When you are taking shots of your products, it's always best to do this against a white or neutral background. This is for two reasons. One, your product will stand out and be the star of the photo. And two, you should be able to easily recreate this background for future product photos to maintain brand consistency. A quick note on branding. You may want to look for ways that you can inject your brand into the background of your photos by using a backdrop that is unique to you, like a barn door or a colored table runner. This is okay to do, but it does have to be done carefully. I strongly suggest staying away from bold colors, particularly reds and yellows, as these can inject color into the item that you are shooting altering the natural appearance of the product. They can also draw the eye to notice the background of your photo rather than the product itself. So for these reasons, I highly recommend sticking with a backdrop that is ultimately neutral in color, even if you want to go with something that is uniquely yours. And don't forget, it should be a background that you can easily recreate when you have new products. So keep it simple and choose something that you will always have access to to maintain consistency across your brand. Next, you want to consider the angle that you're going to shoot. There are three basic angles to focus on. The first is called flat lay, or taking your photo from directly above your subject. This one is the best multi-use angle because you can use it with a group or collection of items, 
or a single item to create high impact. It's also best for shooting plates of food. The second one is the 45 degree angle. This one is the most natural angle and tends to be the one that we all gravitate towards taking naturally. It's generally how we see items in the world. But it can get a little boring if you are taking all of your shots using this angle. The third angle is eye level. This is the perfect angle for layers, stacks, and creating height. It can be a more dramatic look and help you see all of the details of your product. It's a good idea to take a photo of all three angles until you get the hang of which angle is going to be the best suited to each of your products. Now that you have some options to choose from, you're going to select your favorite and give it a little editing love to make sure it is being represented in the best way possible. Now, there are literally thousands of tutorial videos out there to help you learn different ways of editing your photos and dozens of different apps that you can use. But for the purpose of keeping this simple and direct, I'm going to show you my favorite editing tools in the Snapseed app. This is the app that I like using right now and it's available for all phones, Apple and Android. And I find you can make a big difference to your photo without investing a lot of time or knowledge. But of course, you do not have to use this app. You can use whatever methods are most comfortable for you. Okay, once you've downloaded the Snapseed app, you're good to open that up. It's gonna ask you to tap anywhere to open a photo. It's going to pull up all of the photos that you've recently taken and you can select different places that you wanna pull photos from. I've got mine ready right here. We're gonna edit this photo that I took at the market on Saturday. There are typically three different tools that I use. Touch tools at the bottom and it'll bring up the menu. The first one is the white balance. Since our photo has a lot of white in it, I like to use the eyedropper tool at the bottom here. If you pull it over and select the whitest part of your image, see how the ring changes color? Ha, perfect. It's gonna line up and tell your photo that this is the color of white that you wanna base everything else off of. Hit the check mark, you're done and with that one. Go back to tools, we're gonna to look at the curves. This is how you brighten your photo. So with playing with this little curve, you can see how the color brightens and darkens. I like to make my photo slightly brighter than what I want to finish with. Hit the check mark. See how it's a little bit washed out? The next tool we're gonna to use is called Details. And you can see at the top it says structure, or if you click on the bottom here, again we can say we want to edit the structure. Structure is going to add some color back and some depth back into our photo. You can see as I move from side to side, it's either adding detail or removing detail. So I'm going to pull some of the detail back in. I'm going to go pretty far and go about 50%. Mm -mm, maybe 43 and then sharpening. Sharpening also just lets you pull out more detail and create more texture in your photo. More contrast, I should say. Okay, so we're gonna go with about 22. That's all that I like to use. There are so many other tools in here and there's so many different things that you can do with cropping, rotating, changing your perspective and just tuning your image, but I typically tend to gravitate towards the white balance, the curves, and the details. When you're done, select export. I like to save it to my phone. Now when I go back to my photos, I can see my original image and I can see the new one. Here's another photo that I edited. You can just see the difference in contrast. This was the original image, and this was the image after I brightened it up. So editing doesn't need to be difficult or overly involved, but you can certainly use it to pull out the best light of your images. You now have the tools to take and edit beautiful photos that you can post into your wfm to go online store, post them to your social media accounts, and use them on your website. 
We're going to touch on taking effective photos of yourself for social media in the social media video coming soon. In the meantime, please give these tips and tricks a try this month and let us know how you get along. We are here to support you in any way we can. Thank you for joining us for the first episode of the Wolfville Farmers Market Vendor Only video series. We hope that you found this information interesting and useful. See you next month.